Hello everybody and welcome to another Vintage Fans & More ceiling fan installation video. Today we'll be installing the Norden from Hunter Fan Company, so let's go ahead and get started. Before you begin, turn off power at the breaker or fuse. Open the box. Be careful to not slice too deeply into the box as there are parts right below the flaps that could be damaged. As always, I like to remove all parts from the box so that I can make sure that everything is present and that nothing is damaged. Locate the motor assembly, preferred downrod length with ball installed, and adapter cover. Remove the pre-installed set screw from the motor adapter and discard the label. Unbundle the wiring, making it as straight as possible. Slide the adapter cover onto the downrod until it rests against the hanger ball. Gather the wiring and pass it through the threaded end of the downrod. As the wiring exits the other end, ensure that all three wires are on the same side of the interior pin. Hand thread the downrod into the adapter until it stops at least four to five turns. Reinsert the set screw into the adapter and tighten securely with pliers. It is imperative that this screw be securely tightened. Slide the adapter cover down until it rests against the motor housing. Locate the canopy. Pass the wiring through the bottom side of the canopy and guide the canopy over the downrod, allowing it to rest on top of the motor. To keep my fans in like new condition, I choose not to cut the lead wires, but now is the time to do so if you'd prefer to. I have my sample prop to demonstrate. Simply extend the wiring and trim it evenly, leaving 8 to 12 inches exiting the top of the downrod. On Hunter fans, you can use the ground wire attached to the downrod as a guide for the length that you should cut. Restrip the wire ends, then you're ready to proceed. We will now move to the ceiling. Locate the mounting bracket. If you have an extra wire for separate light kit control, you can cap it and tuck it up into the box. Alternately, if you have an installation that utilizes two separate switches, one for the light and one for the fan, this wire can still be used for separate light kit control. Simply connect the blue wire from the fan to it during installation. Attach the mounting bracket to your electrical box or building structure using appropriate screws. Ceiling fans should only be mounted to electrical boxes visibly marked as being suitable for ceiling fan support. If you are at all in doubt of your electrical infrastructure, Structure, contact a qualified electrician. Tighten the bracket until the rubber pads sit flush against the ceiling. Move the wiring out of the bracket opening in preparation to hang the fan. Lift the motor assembly into the mounting bracket, ensuring that the ball engages with the bracket. Make all wiring connections. Two green ground wires, one from the fan and one from the mounting bracket, connect with ground at the ceiling typically green or bare copper. White from the fan connects with neutral at the ceiling, typically white. Black from the fan connects with hot at the ceiling, typically black or red. Ensure all wiring connections are tucked into the electrical box. If the blue wire from the fan is not utilized for separate light control as mentioned earlier, cap it with a spare wire nut. Gather and tuck all excess wiring into the mounting bracket space. Locate the canopy screws in the bag marked with a circle. Raise the canopy, aligning the opening in the bottom with the ball and mounting bracket. Insert the two canopy screws, then tighten both securely. Locate all three blades, the blade screws in the bag marked with a triangle, and the blade washers in the bag marked with a square. Install the washers onto the screws. Insert the screws through the blades and install the blades to the motor. Ensure that the rubber washer seats evenly into the blade as you tighten. Repeat this process for all three blades. Mm -hmm. 
locate the upper switch housing, LED assembly, and light kit screws in the bag marked with three lines. Remove the rubber band from the wiring on the bottom of the fan if you haven't already. Install two light kit screws about halfway into the adapter on the bottom of the fan. It does not matter which two positions you choose. Pass the wiring through the center of the upper switch housing. Raise it and engage the keyhole slots onto the two screws. Insert a third screw in the remaining position, then tighten all securely. Thread two more screws about halfway into the upper switch housing. Again, it does not matter which positions you choose. Connect the LED assembly using the single pin connectors. Raise the LED assembly to the fan, engaging the keyhole slots onto the screws. Ensure that the wiring is tucked down into the recess of the LED assembly. Insert a third screw into the remaining position, then tighten all securely, ensuring that no wiring is getting pinched. Locate the glass globe. Raise the glass to the fan, aligning the notches in the glass with the tabs in the fan. Rotate the glass clockwise a third of a turn. Ensure proper engagement. The glass can be a bit of a tight fit on this fan, but you can kind of feel it pop into place when it's right. Locate the handheld remote and battery. Remove the battery compartment door. Install the battery as shown, then replace the compartment door. You can mount the included cradle in any location where you'd like to store the remote. Restore power. Installation is complete. With no additional control setup, the Norden is ready for regular operation. If you found today's video to be helpful, be sure to let me know by leaving a thumbs up or a comment down below. Subscribe and ring the notification bell before you leave so that you get updates for all of my new videos. Thank you all for watching today, and I will see you next time.